Morning. I hope you're having a good week and that the slight ease in lockdown is helping. The Bible reading I want to focus on today is a psalm. Not the first time I've used that great collection of poems to find some inspiration. Today, Helen is going to read Psalm 33, verses 1 to 9. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It's fitting for the uprise to praise him. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make music to him on the ten-stringed lyre. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He's faithful in all he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, their starry host by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea into jars. He puts the deep into storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world revere him. For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. The verses I love in this psalm are the ones about musical instruments. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make music to him on the ten-stringed lyre. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. Well, I know a little bit about the lyre and the harp, but I thought I'd find out more. The lyre, I discover, is one of the oldest musical instruments in the world, going back to 2500 BC. It has a body, two arms with a crossbow called the yoke, and the ten or more strings come from the body into the yoke, and they can be plucked or bowed. The harp is, well, a harp, nearly as old. I looked up what number of strings a harp should normally have, and the answer how many strings do you want? These days it's usually 14 to 26, but it can be up to 47. Whatever, the psalmist is saying, use these instruments and the human voice to the glory of God. And that prompts me to think about the importance of music during the lockdown. Certainly it's been important to us here, and I mentioned a couple of highlights on television. One was a wonderful young cellist. She arranged the parts of various well-known pieces of music, videoed herself playing each of these separately, then brought them together with eight pictures of herself on the screen, dressed in something appropriate for the music, like Darth Vader's helmet for the theme of Star Wars. It was absolutely brilliant. And when she was interviewed, she said it took her a couple of hours to arrange the music, 10 minutes to dress up, and a lifetime to organise the filming. Then there was a version of Bridge Over Troubled Water, sung by medical staff in North Wales. Absolutely beautiful. It even drew praise from Paul Simon, the composer, and I found it inspiring. But let me go from the sublime to the ridiculous. I hardly dare confess this. I had a nostalgic evening a week ago. I played music from my hometown. And that included George Formby and the ukulele and the Verve, who went to my school. It was all great, not to everybody's taste, I agree, but it kept me cheerful. And then, of course, music has enhanced our worship. OK, our attempts to sing at our services have been, shall we say, not altogether successful, but we've had some good moments. Last Sunday, Andrew put together Pentecost hymns from St Martin in the Fields, and the Holy Spirit was definitely present in those few moments. A few weeks ago, we closed our all-age service with the UK blessing. 65 churches represented to pray in music for our nation. A member of the congregation texted during it to say it gave her goosebumps. And it's not just our church that's benefiting from music. The daughter of a friend of mine is in the choir of a church in the heart of Manhattan and they have kept singing separately but together during these awful days in the States. The psalmist would approve. Praise the Lord, he says, with harp and lyre and not just with instruments but with our voices. Sing him a new song and then very encouragingly, if you haven't got a great voice, 
shout for joy. So whether you are gifted or tone deaf, give thanks for music, in general because it enriches life, and in particular because it expresses our faith and can bring us nearer to God. I'm going to close this reflection with some music. It's another psalm, 23, The Lord's My Shepherd. It's been set to music in many different ways, but at the moment I particularly love the one by Stuart Townend, sung here by the St Martin in the Fields Choir. I hope you too find it a blessing. Will to